Um, I'm the curator, Francesca Gavin. This is my show. Um, the concept of the exhibition kind of grew up of my own history being older than most of the artists who are in the show, not Jeremy Della or Harry Burden, but most of them are quite young. And I got really fascinated how I kept seeing the references of kind of psychedelic rave in the work they were making or like an interest and obsession with that moment in time, even though they weren't there, they were all like three at the period in time, and I find that really interesting. Um, and I initially did a smaller version, well, a larger physically and a more kind of DIY version of the show in New York two years ago. And it was in a weird warehouse, open for two weekends in Bushwick. And it was very loud and noisy and crazy and a bit of a mess, but really fun. And I wanted, I was kindly asked to recreate it here. And we have very, we have some of the same artists, but actually most of the works are completely different. Everyone's different works for us. So there's 13 artists in total. The first piece is actually invisible, but it's a sound piece over there that you'll hear that's on a loop by an artist called Hannah Perry. She's graduating from the Royal Academy Wednesday. Um, she's really, really fascinated by the kind of cut and paste techniques of late 80s, early 90s music videos and the editing processes within music, full stop. So a lot of her films incorporate footage of like Northern Scallies getting off and footage of herself when she's a kid living in Lancashire, near Chester. Um, and then bits of like music video stuff, voguing, glitch, all mushed up together. But for here, she's done a sound piece, which is kind of unusual for her, um, which she's all done herself, and it's quite loud and noisy and fun. Um, then we also, the other thing we don't have here, which is the GIF, which you can see online, which has also been made into a smiley for the, yes, this. Here's smiley I prepared earlier. Um, and this by an artist called Christian Peterson. He lives in Portland. He's originally British. And he's got a magazine called I Want You Magazine, which is kind of an amazing, purely digital free publication. He does kind of psychedelic music video nights called Penetration Now in, over there. And he basically has a great um, GIF site called GIF Lords, um, a lot of which is produced by him, largely himself. But I actually was really fascinated the idea of a GIF being of kind of viral artwork as well as anything, and obviously very relevant to the subject. Um, then we have Daniel Swan. This is called Plane Drift 4. It was originally commissioned by Data Confused magazine for um, their visionaries online filming. And I, he's one of the best 3D model modelers out there. He's incredible. He codes everything himself. I put him in a couple of other shows that I've done. He's, it's always kind of beyond real. This one's amazing. Sometimes he's done ones where you're panning left along like a sci-fi kind of landscape. There's always this sense of like real space and weirdness that's not possibly real. And again, it's got a great soundtrack. This is a very noisy exhibition, which will be interesting shouting above in the other rooms. Um, but yeah, I kind of am just in love with the piece. And I quite like the idea of it being an entrance into what we're doing. I'm going to take you into this room. Um, all right, so let's begin with Petra Courtright. Petra Courtright's one of the first artists to use webcams in, uh, as an artwork. She basically filmed this while she was getting ready to go out and DJ at a club in Berlin. Um, and all the sound and filming got a bit fucked up and bleepy and speeded up when you listen to it. But I quite liked it as sort of a representation of femininity and its role in club culture, because it's not really much of that represents when people talk often if you're reading books around club culture it's all talking from a male perspective so I quite like that um, and she's very performative in general what she does a lot of her work involves her and I thought it was a really interesting pairing with Alexander Gorkinski who I stumbled across first on an amazing blog called Hologram City it was a tumblr she did which is filled with smiley faces and weird imagery and fashion stuff and she uses, I quite liked her, she's blonde, I quite liked her using, again, sort of images of femininity, technology, and the handmade all squished up together. There's no sound element in that for a change. Um, then we have Marisa Olsen. She's painted loads of cassette tapes gold. I found this kind of amazing. In terms of the reference to the theme, she raved 
obviously was so disseminated by like illegal pirate video mixtapes on cassettes. It's such a defunct technology that no one actually uses anymore. And I like the idea of making it gold and glorified and into something sculptural when really it's such a throw, it was a really throwaway thing at the time. And now it has absolutely no importance or reference. Then we have Reese Corin, and he's an amazing artist. In a way, this whole exhibition was inspired by Reese's practice. He's obsessed with rave. His first gig when he was 12 was the prodigy. He basically is kind of, all his work is about British culture and that moment in time and footballness and he basically, and abstraction. Very kind of looking at the idea of like comparing football strips and abstract painting, which is amazing. So this was a version of a piece he's done. The first variation like this was a two screen um, project with the, a really slowed down version and animations from Rhubarb and Custard by Shaft, which was a rave tune inspired by a 1970s, 80s cartoon that was in England. Um, we thought, uh, 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 but he did it really slowed down, which is kind of amazing. But he's made, he's used the same kind of techniques here, that kind of sense of abstraction and like DIY marker animation, but the sound is his own thing. He's done a, another version of this, which was in the center of a room with eight different monitors, but I love it here, and it's beautiful. And then on the other wall here, we have Harry Burden. Harry's slightly older than some of the artists here. He actually was involved with the rave scene in Australia, but I'm totally obsessed when you walk in front of it. It's like a lenticular, but it's three-dimensional. It's He used the most expensive car paint he could find. And what he was doing, he was taking casts of car crashes from a mechanic nearby. So basically this is a car that got destroyed and then recreating them and then painting them with this amazing, deeply expensive iridescent paint. Um, and I kind of liked linking it subject wise to people traveling around trying to get to raves, that kind of thing. Also the kind of crash and burn element of that scene that doesn't exist anymore, maybe the utopian aspects within it all, and also the kind of J.G. Ballard crash, interactive, social aspect of it. And it's also a really beautiful object. People keep trying to touch it. Okay, shove you over there. This is a really noisy room, so I will be speaking loudly. Um, but I was totally, I, there's like, I think four or five sound pieces in the show, and I'm really into the idea of sound clash, as it, or, or blur, or overlap. I found that really fascinating, and also totally relevant to the experience of going out between different rooms and music, and maybe that overwhelming physical nature you get within it all. A lot of the work is quite referencing psychedelica, but a kind of 90s, early 90s, late 80s, birth of fractal graphics and computer animation of that period in time, which is probably the first time people were exploring the internet and that kind of dissemination of animation in a really basic way. This by an artist called um, Travis Smalley, he's from New York. He's done a lot of projection pieces like this. He's also done really large canvases. A lot of his work now is taking these kind of digitally created abstract pieces and then printing them out, cutting them up, reprinting them, photographing them all, kind of playing around with the processes. But this is called Trance Puddles. It's from his Trance Puddle series. I also like, I mean, it's really an abstract painting, but it's moving really slowly, and I love that. And I think the fluidity of it's particularly interesting in comparison to some of the other works in this show, such as, since it's making a noise, um, Adam Faramawi's work here. Um, Adam graduated from the Royal Academy last year. He, is, he always incorporates and embeds technology and sculptural objects. I'm re he's done sort of amazing paintings that just use this kind of crusty luminosity. Um, but here he's kind of, I'm, I think personally, the kind of the internet's so embedded into how a lot of people access music all this period in time, which I think is fascinating, um, that it made a really good combination of it. So. It, there are two screens, both of them were different, a lot of ambient sound, some music elements. This is more like him manipulating his own desktop, 
Then we get elements that are repeated on the sculpture here, which again have this kind of digital fluidity, which I find kind of amazing to look at. And I like that kind of trance-like process of staring at it in a sort of esoteric sense. Um, and I, it blurs in and out at different moments with Fatima al Qadiri over here. So this is a, the noisiest, bassiest piece we have in the show. And this is by Fatima al Qadiri and Sofia al Maria. Now, Fatima al Qadiri comes from a music and art background. She was originally born in Kuwait, grew up in the States afterwards. A lot of her work is referencing those kind of Arab references. She does an amazing mixtape series for Disc Magazine online. Um, this came out of a series of collaborative videos she did to go with an EP. Um, one with Tabo Roback, one with Ryan Tricartin, and this one's with Sofia Almeria. And it's called How Can I Resist You, with the letter U. And it's about Arab girls coming to London in the summer and going crazy, that kind of freedom of it. I find that really fascinating as a film. I also like the kind of digitized, crap YouTube quality of it. I think that's kind of really suits this whole process. And then we have Lucy Stockton. I'm kind of obsessed with the idea that you fall into what you're looking at. Um, and again, I felt this really echoed Travis and Adham's work. She was originally involved with Lucky PDF. She was part of, uh, it's a London-based collective coming out of Peckham. They, they had like artist-led television programs. They did a whole project with Freeze a few years ago. And she was definitely like, very involved with the behind the scenes and the eye dents and that whole creation. And I also, again, liked her kind of feminine aspect within all of it. But also, I love the kind of fusion of different forms of overlapping technology in it. And I also think you feel like you're going to fall in, which I think is great. And I'm going to take you to this piece over here. Um, I'm obsessed with UV. I'm going to speak a really loud bit now. Um, I'm obsessed with UV. I did a whole entire exhibition called The Dark Cube in the Palais de Tokyo, which was works in UV. I like things that glow. But this is by Jeremy Della. This, I originally showed a small version of this piece there, but it's sort of the heart of the exhibition for me. It's the idea of a moment in time that doesn't exist anymore and what was its impact on culture in a wider sense and so no one really evaluates it in that sense. It's always seen as something pop as opposed to something representing the first moments of rebellion or dissent or sorry dissent or politics or resistance that I think a lot of people ever got to experience. And then maybe after the Criminal Justice Act we are never going to be able to experience again within this country because there's never been legislation against music in the same way than it was in like 1995. Um, and I like its simplicity and that it glows. And it's, it's such like, if you had to think of a logo of Rave, this would be it. Um, but I think also it's wonderful placing a lot of these younger artists in the context of someone like Jerry Della. Mark Leckie would have been another artist who would make complete sense, because I think they're kind of the artists in the show are those artists' babies, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm, overall as a show, I really wanted it to be loud and fun and accessible and not necessarily coming with the artistic references that you have to have when you see a lot of shows. It's definitely an anti-minimalist show um, because I think that's actually quite important and I think that art should be accessed by a wider audience as opposed to something that you can only access if you're going to shows regularly. And I I'll show you one last thing outside, which is here. because then I don't have to shout over the music anymore. <laughs> um, and it's the addition by Jeremy Della that he's made for us specifically, which I think is a lovely kind of updated version of what he created, which is, it's all printed on Perspex. They're all beautiful, they look gorgeous layered and differently, but also they scratch quite easily. And I think there's something kind of wonderful about that. It's a bit like records itself. Again, a defunct technology we're not really using anymore, or it's beginning to die away. And I find that really fascinating. And those are the works in the show. That was so cool. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, bright, shiny, noisy show. Cool. Oh, good. You got me. That's it. Good. There you go.